So in this support video for Java for testers, what I'm going to do is uh, create a new project, add JUnit, and create a first test. This is some of the information that's on the first few chapters of Java for testers. Now on the help with install page on javafortesters.com slash page slash install, there's the instructions for getting set up with the JDK for Maven and IntelliJ. So I'm going to assume that you've done that. So having started up IntelliJ, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new project. I'm going to work with Java 1.8 because that's what I've got here. That's nice and simple. Then I'll create a group ID. So I'm going to call that uh, com.java for testers. You can call that whatever um, website you normally use. I'll call this uh, my first project. And I'll leave the snapshot the same. Then I'm going to choose a project to put it in. So I'll call it desktop Java for testers. And I'll just name it my first project. So finish. Then we have got IntelliJ starting up. Now, when it says here Maven projects need to be imported, I'm going to say enable auto import. That means that when I change the pom.xml file, it will do all the imports for me automatically and just make my life easier. Now, if I look in the Java for Testers book, I can see that it's telling me that what I need to add into the pom.xml is the uh, JUnit information. So here it is here, the dependencies, JUnit 4.11. I could just copy that from here, or if I go off to JUnit. Now, if you go off to JUnit now, JUnit.org, you see that JUnit has a version 5, which I'm not using at this point. You could use, but it has some slightly differences between what's covered in the book. So I'm going to use JUnit 4, which is mature and stable. And in here, if I click on the most recent version, which is version 4.12, or I'll click on the download and I'll, I'll find out information about it. I'm going to click on download and install. And it's going to show me what I have to bring in as a dependency. So if I take that, which is the dependency block of information. It says that my project is going to be dependent on JUnit version 4.12. Now, in order to add this to my pom.xml, I need a dependencies section. So I start writing dependencies and it shows up. Because this is XML, it needs to be um, well formatted in terms of the wrapper. So we have the element tag, then within it, we put the next one. So I need dependencies with an opening tag, then a closing tag. And in there, I'll just copy my dependency. And if I have any other dependencies, I'll add them in there. Now, because we had enable auto imports, we saw that coming in here. So now JUnit is part of my project. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new test. So open up the source, open up test, open up Java, and I'm going to say new Java class. I'm going to just call this my first test. I'm not going to worry about package structures or anything like that at the moment. I'm just going to create my first test. So I'm going to say at test because I want the annotation from org.junit. So I've, you can see that coming up here. So I'll just click on that. And what that has done is it has imported org.junit test to allow me to use that annotation. Now, the reason I have a syntax error here is that I haven't created a method yet. So I'll say public void. Um, a test method. And then I will just add an assert. So I'll say assert dot assert true. And then I'll assert that true is true. So it's going to pass. Now assert, in order to get that in my class, I've got a syntax error. If I do alt enter, then I can say I want to import that class. I want to import it from the right place, which is going to be org.junit. This I could import this, but then I'd be using a method that's been deprecated. I don't want to do that. I want to use the most up-to-date one. So I want to say org.junit, the assert. You can see it's added the import. Now I have a class that works. I've written a test. Test doesn't do anything except assert that assert is true. So let me run that. Right-click, run a test method. and it's running. Now, if you get issues, 
what you might find is that Maven um, defaults to an older version of Java that you may not have installed. So what we then have to do is if you look in GitHub, I'm just showing the easiest place to find this. This is not the, the only place that you can find this information. If I look in repositories, I'll just search for Java for So start using Java JUnit. This is a simple project you can use to install things. But if I look in the pom.xml file here, I see that I have this code, this build code here. If I, if I have any issues running my test code because it says the version of Java is not supported because it's defaulting to Java 1.5, if I put this code into my pom.xml, just like this, then it's, this is basically saying, I want to run this on a at least a Java 1.7 version. I could change that to Java 1.8. It'll be fine, but it'll be fine as Java 1.7. And that would allow me to run it from the terminal. Uh, so Miven test. Now, if I take this out, I might not see a problem here. Let me just try. Even test. Yep, so I didn't actually have a problem with that, but if I was running this on someone else's machine, I might have an issue that the Maven version isn't supported. This is just a handy thing to add into your project to make that work. But you can see all this code, this is, you can see that pretty much this project that I've created here is almost exactly the same as the one that's in the start using Java JUnit project that I've created on um, GitHub to help people get started, which is also mentioned on the starting project in the um, videos here. So in the code, what else do we have? So that's covered in the um, book as well. So that is uh, chapter two. So chapter three, writing your first code. Um, we could carry on here and I, I, all I have to do here is my first test in a certain package. So hopefully you've got an idea for what you have to do now. In order for me to write this, what I would do, test Java, I right click on that and say new package. And that was in, I think, com.java for testers. Probably what, chapter three. I'll say example, it doesn't matter if it's not the same. So that's created a package hierarchy in there. In example, then I can right click and say new Java class, my first test. And even though we've got my first test in another package, it doesn't matter because they're in a, a different package structure. So these are unique classes. At test, public void can add, oops, add to plus to it help if I could type int because I'm creating a variable answer equals two plus two. So when this code runs, it basically says take two plus two, which is going to be four and put that into a, a variable called answer, which is an int. And then I'm going to assert on that. I'm going to say assert equals and I'm going to put in a message that says two plus two is supposed to be four. And then I'm going to assert that four is answer. Now assert equals, it doesn't know about that. So I'm going to say alt enter, and then I'm going to import static method from the org.junit. So it's slightly different than I did it before. You see in here, I typed assert dot assert true and then it imported assert. Here I've just done assert equals, so I didn't have to write assert in front of it, which can make it a bit more readable. I tend to not code like this, but this can make it more readable. And in order for this to work, we have to import it statically. And the book explains all this eventually as you work through. I'm just following the example to get this working. Now in IntelliJ, if I go to one of these um, parameters and type, I did command P 
on Windows it be Control P. I can see the order of the messages, and what this is saying is I'm expecting, so I've typed in a message, which is this, the number, which is the expected value, then the actual value, which is answer. If I run this test, this should work. So I'm just going to quickly show you why I added 2 plus 2. If I change this to 3, then this test would fail because 3 doesn't equal 2 plus 2. If I run this, you can see that it's given me an assertion error and it's put the message 2 plus 2 equals 4 there. So I can see a bit more information about what it is. I could even write, I was expecting 2 plus 2 to equal 4. If I run that, Session error, I was expecting 2 plus 2 equal 4. So this string here is just to give me some debug information if my tests fail. I'll put that back to 4, so the test is running. There we go. So hopefully that's enough information to get you started, get through the first couple of chapters, because the hardest part with all of this is getting set up. Um, you could, if you wanted, just download the start using have a JUnit project and build up from there and use that or you can start from scratch using the approach that we've explained here which is also the approach that is covered in the book. So hope that helps and um, thanks for tuning in and thanks for working with Java for testers.